and welcome to Saturday on the Political Ranter Show. I hope everyone had a nice Christmas and let's look forward to the new year. Today I only have one thing to talk to you about today and it is the knighthood of Nick Clay. Now this is something I actually have a lot to say about because let's not forget this is a man who propped up a conservative government who helped attack the most vulnerable in our society. He went back on most of his promises in that coalition government and this is the type of man that we are rewarding with a knighthood in our country. Now yes, I do understand that the Lib Dems did help stop a lot of bad things happening in the Conservative government, especially things like the two-child tax policy, which would have happened five years earlier if it wasn't for the Lib Dems. And when we came to the 2015 majority, from 2015 to 2017, and when we saw this horrendous cut coming from the Conservatives with a full majority, it really did take you back a second and think, wow, the Lib Dems did stop a lot of the cuts. So they did do a bit. But they just didn't do enough. Now agreeing to work with the Tories did basically stop any chance of us getting rid of this terrible two-party system and this terrible voting system. Some of the things that Lib Dem stand for. I do have a sense of what kind of country that I would want to live in and it's not one where liars about student debt get knighthoods. Now if I'm completely honest with you anyway, even though this shouldn't come as a shock to anybody, I'm not the biggest fan of knighthoods, I'm not the biggest fan of OBE, nothing like that, because I'm really anti-monarchy. So I'm not the biggest fan of these things anyway, but if you're going to give them out, you shouldn't give them out to people who did harm to this country. Any chance of a fairer society at that time and any chance of fixing our broken voting system and any chance of the society that we all want died with Nick Clay. And when it came to the 2015 election, as we know, the Conservatives won a majority because most of the Lib Dem seats did fall to the Tories. Some fell to Labour and other minor parties, but most of those seats did fall to Tories, which helped the Tories get a majority. And that majority government from 2015 to 2017 did so much damage to our country and it returned the two-party system which is something that i've honestly always advocated against that majority government in 2015 after the fall of the anti-two-party system imposed cuts on nhs an eu referendum that we didn't want which then risked the strength and security of our union with scotland and other parts of the uk and they even toyed with bringing back fox hunting and they even made cuts to other public services such as police which made our streets less safe this is the legacy of that majority conservative government and the fall of the two-party system from the people who were so anti-Lib Dems and so messed off with the Lib Dems. I don't have a problem with parties working together for the good of the country. I mean, how many times have I called for Labour to stop this foolishness now and just work with the SNP for the good of the country and to lock the Tories out of Downing Street and to run as a united front to work against the Tories? How many times have I called for that? So it's not that I'm anti-coalition. The thing is how a coalition is supposed to work is that both sides of the argument and both sides of the coalition are supposed to get things that they want but how the Lib Dem and Tory coalition worked is that the Tories got everything that they wanted and the Lib Dems didn't get anything, none of their key promises apart from an AV referendum which if I was old enough at the time to vote on it I probably would have voted for AV not that I liked AV, now I have my issues with AV, but if we voted against AV that would have stopped further talks to fairer things like proportional representation. So that's why I would have voted for AV. The Lib Dems did not get most of their key promises, they compromised on a lot and they didn't, and they didn't fight hard enough to get the things they wanted through. Now I accept that it was a coalition and I accept that they couldn't have fulfilled their entire manifesto and had they got a majority they probably would have done a much better job, I accept that position but they didn't get any of their key promises which is a very big disappointment now the Lib Dems are supposed to be a centre-left party, right? So what they should have done in 2010 is they shouldn't have worked with the Tories who are right. They should have worked with other left parties such as Labour, such as Green, such as the SNP. I think they had less seats than they do now. But if they worked with those parties and if they formed together, I, I can't remember if they, if they would have had enough seats to get a majority, probably not. But if they worked with those parties, they could have formed an alliance going into the next election. 
section so that would have been more radical change and those parties would have been much more easy to negotiate with because they probably would have agreed on a lot more things than the Lib Dems and Tories so that was a complete wrong decision from Lib Dems to work with the Tories. You know what, me and the Liberal Democrats, we actually agree on lots of things. Like we both want a fairer voting system, we both want a fair society, and we both want an end to the two-party system, and we both want an end to the House of Lords, I think, and we both want some of those more things that would make the society fairer. So me and the Lib Dems are not totally on the opposite side of the bench, but there is a key difference. It would never work with the Tories and the Lib Dems should have never agreed to work with the Tories because how how different would our country be now in elections if we had a decent other parties to vote for which did not sell out to the Tories. The Dems could have refused to work with the Tories and watch the Tories fail to run a minority government and not get any legislation through and not get any of their damaging cuts through and then they could have watched them fail to run that government and then we could have had another election which would have maybe even downsized more what the Tories had at the time. So it, so refusing to work with the Tories could have gone for the better of this country and they should have formed alliances with other parties, but that's not what they did. They chose to suck up the power and they chose to put their interests first and get power instead of the interests of the country. Now it is very sad for me because I've made no attempt in hiding that had I been old enough to vote in 2010, I probably would have voted for Nick Clegg knowing that I was going to go to university in three years time and it could have saved me a lot of money on his policy. When I thought we were actually heading towards change, I thought that 2010 could strike different and could be a turning point for British politics, but no. Yeah, uh, congratulations Nick Clegg on your um, knighthood. I hope you enjoyed that free university education that you were entitled to. <laughs> everyone has a good day and I'll see you next time.